everyone, you may have watched my previous video on interviewing tips and advice. In that video, I talked about the interviewing process from my standpoint, from my perspective and experience, and I shared a little bit about my digital portfolio. So in this video, essentially what you will be seeing is a clip from the initial video with the components of my teaching portfolio. I thought it was important to just separate it and created a different video just in case someone wanted to just get right to the portfolio basics of what I have inside my portfolio, you could just get right to it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Be blessed, stay tuned. If you like what you see in this video, remember to click that subscribe button so you will get weekly updates every time I post a new video weekly. Blessings on blessings. See you soon in another video and all the best with your interviews and this new school year. All right, so let's get into my digital portfolio. So here we are in my Google Drive and I have designated a folder for teacher portfolio. In your Google Drive, you will create a folder for your teacher portfolio that is very easy to do. You can click on new within your drive and you will click new folder. It creates a folder for you. You type in the name of the folder and you hit create. All right. So here we have five folders within my teaching portfolio. And my five folders are my cover letter, my sample instruction, virtual best practices, my ratings, and professional development. I'm speaking a little fast for the sake of not taking too long in this part of the video. If I am speaking too fast, please forgive me. Please forgive me and I will take my time. So let's start off with one. One, here is my cover letter. Here is my resume. Here's my professional references. And I have also listed my file number in the event that someone says, oh my goodness, you are so amazing on the spot. We want to hire you. Well, in my portfolio here, you have access to all the information that you may need. Now, I'm not the expert, so if someone knows whether or not that's a pro or a con as to having my file number in here, please let me know. I have been in a situation where someone has hired me without my saying yes, and that was very interesting. We had to undo that process. So just a heads up, be very careful with how you put your file numbers out here. Sample instruction. So in this here, I spoke about my EdTPA earlier. I have videos of sample instructions, how I engage with the students, how I'm teaching them the concept and the content, this idea of three-dimensional learning, disciplinary core ideas, engineering practices, all of it included in this video, as well as a narrative about what the video is about. Why am I teaching the students this? How is it connected to their lesson and how am I checking that they are understanding what it is that I am teaching. You'll find that there's discussion present in the video. I am more of the guide on the side. And students are leading the conversation and coming to their own realization based on how I have guided and structured the lesson. So in the event of this pandemic where I can't teach in person, my work is speaking for itself in this video. And for me personally, if EdTPA says that this was mastery, a school should also see that this was some good stuff right here. So that's why I have included this specific video in my portfolio because it was the exact same video. It is the exact same video that I have used for my EdTPA and therefore they will see that it was successful with the state. So it qualifies as a good teaching sample. If you do not have an EdTPA video, but you have a recording that you believe is good as well for your students, they're not technically critical on a student teacher engagement. It's once they're, they're seeing that dynamic happening, it's usually rated very well. Okay, unless the teacher is the one that's doing all the speaking, that's where it may be no so bueno. But if the students are doing just as much or if not more speaking than the teacher, then that is highly effective. All right, so number two is my student work and peer feedback. In the event that you do not have student work, you can have a sample lesson here if you're a new teacher. Now, I have a blank document, which would be the blank lesson, the initial lesson, which you would have if you're a new teacher, you would just have the plain lesson. This was a lesson on density, and I was using the layers of the earth to have a conversation on density. Why is the earth layered the way in which it is, the crust, the core, the mantle, 
Why are they in these specific layers and not like the not just the other way around? So having a conversation by density, the concept of density to bring students to this realization. So here's my worksheet here, very structured. We're using a simulation, the FET Colorado density simulation that you can find online if you're teaching density. And I have some questions here to guide students to have them thinking. Then I have some numbers here about the thickness of the crust, the core, the mantle. How does this relate, especially with the materials that are in both of them? Students are taking this from a reading. How can we make the connections to density and layers? Now, this was my plain lesson. As I mentioned, as a new teacher, you may just have this the plain lesson and you would write a narrative about how you would go about assessing students that they are understanding, how you would go about ensuring that the resources that you are selecting are meeting the student's need as well as meeting the content needs. Because you can select a lot of different materials, but is it going to get the understanding? Is it going to get the job done? All right, so here's a student work product. All right. I number the student for the sake of confidentiality. You do not put the student's names on documents. And so here we have the student work and you see that I am giving feedback to the student in the column on the right. I'm saying, yes, great job, including your units. I'm being very specific. Administration is paying attention to how you're giving feedback. Should you put something like this in your portfolio? Not necessary, but I had it, so I included it. So I'm giving feedback. I'm, ask, I'm, I'm asking students questions. Great job supporting your claim with data and additionally explaining your thinking. Now I'm asking students questions. Now, based on your calculations and what you have stated here, which of the layers has the greatest thickness, right? And it goes on. And then eventually I'm asking them the question about, tell me now what you understand in regards to density based on the layers of the earth, where they are, their thickness, the materials that they're made of. Talk to me now about this concept or this idea of density having to do with why the earth is layered the way in which it is. So that was my sample lesson. Three is my rubric. How am I measuring and assessing my students? It's necessary to have a rubric so you're guiding students. Students are knowing, okay, my teacher didn't just give me a 90 and I don't know why I got a 90, but the rubric, or she didn't give me a four and I don't know why I got a four, he or she, but she gave me a rubric. Ms. James gave me a rubric stating, if I got a four, three, two, or one, this is the criteria why I may have gotten that grade. So when I go back to Ms. James and I say, hey, Ms. James, I noticed I got a three. Why was it not a four? I can, we can sit now with that student and talk about why the work product qualified for a three instead of a four. So I have included my rubric for my assessment in my sample teaching folder within my portfolio. And then the last but not least for my sample instruction is field trip planning document. I love planning trips for my students. I have taken a course with the American Museum of Natural History on how to create plans for informal learning, which is learning in the outside the classroom. And therefore I have this experience and this is something that I have under my belt. And I, it was important for me to include this into my portfolio to say, hey, listen, I have experience with planning outdoor trips, very tailored structured by groups. I have structured the activity. Usually I go to the museum ahead of time. I know what section of the museum I want the kids to be a part of. I take pictures of the specific displays that I would like for them to see. 30 kids, 10 students per individual. I have a schedule for the museum. And again, once again, there are worksheets attached here. So this is something that is phenomenal. Uh, and I have added it in here to just, uh, you want to speak to your strengths. So whatever it is that you're great at, if you're great at creating cartoons, comics, strips for the kids to engage them daily, you would put that in your sample instruction. If you're great at creating some type of call and response activity and you have a sample of that, put that in your portfolio. Whatever is unique to you and your purpose, put that in your portfolio. Administration loves it, it speaks to your practice and um, it says a lot about who you are.
virtual best practices during the pandemic. A colleague shared a form that she was using for her student attendance. And my co-teacher and I, we tweaked it for ourselves and used it to gather data on student attendance, student engagement. And so that was something that was important for me to include here. If you're applying to charter school, charter schools like to see what artifact have you created to do something in your classroom or to assist with learning in your classroom, facil facilitate student understanding and discussion. What artifact have you created to help with your pedagogical practice. And so it, I included that in there to say, okay, this is something that my my um, team and I have put together to help the kids. Here is a virtual science best practice to talk about some of the things that we have done Hi well guys, this is in the science classroom. Hi everyone. It is this myself is and my co-teacher talking about what we've done so brilliantly over this pandemic to elevate that remote learning experience. And that is included for again, the interviewers to see because they can't see me teach in person and I can go on forever talking about, but show me what you do. Show me what you do. Instead of telling me, show me. And so I've included that here. Fourth is the ratings. I'm not going to open that for confidentiality. Whatever your ratings are, you place it there. Some schools will ask. I have been on interviews where the schools have asked me what were your ratings for your previous year? If not, I think all the schools have asked me. This previous year, because of the pandemic, there were no ratings, but my year before that, I've included my ratings here. So whatever your ratings are, you include that in your folder. If you want to create a reflection to talk about um, how your ratings transition from being whatever initially was, to your strengths, to showing growth at the end, you can speak to that if you were not pleased or if you're super pleased with your ratings, you can talk about your growth and development there. Now you may wonder, why do I have professional development here? But I have placed it here because if you're familiar with the Danielson framework for teaching, which is how administration measures teacher practice and rates us, you will know that component four of the Danielson speaks about teacher's professional growth. Is this teacher partaking in activities that are showing that this, this person is growing in this area? Are they taking professional development sessions? Are they working with a mentor or a colleague? Are they taking the areas for growth that you have placed on their ratings when they come in to observe you? Are they taking your feedback and implementing growth within that area? What are they doing to show that they are developing their skills? And so I have placed in my portfolio, my professional developments to say, hey, listen, I'm doing work here. I'm doing work to stay on my toes. I am doing work to be the best educator that I can be, not just for myself, but for my students as well. I am now an Apple teacher, which I had shared in a previous video, and I will speak more about that in another video about how I went about that process. You can do it too. And so I've included that in my professional development sessions, in my professional development folder. And that's pretty much it, guys. A digital portfolio, very simple to put together. Once again, you've got your resume, cover letter, references, sample instruction if you have it. If you don't have a sample instruction, you would include your sample lesson, your sample rubric, and a narrative about how you would go about teaching this lesson, what resources you would use, and how you would measure student understanding and assess that they have mastered the topic. Then you would have your ratings, if applicable, if you have any, or you would have some professional developments. What If you're a new teacher, what have you been doing to grow yourself? Do you have any certificates that you can download from online platforms like Tech um, for Teachers? and you can include it here in your portfolio. Now, I would say what's missing in my philosophical perspectives when it comes to how students learn and students learn best or my teaching philosophy on why I'm passionate about teaching and how I got into the field, that would be something that I would say is missing here as well as student feedback. It's always great to hear from the kids. So that's something that I'm working on this year. At the end, at not the end of the year, throughout the year, I want to give students surveys to say, how are you performing in the class? How am I helping you? Is there something that I can do to meet your needs? And at the end, better. And at the end of the class, ask students to write, complete a survey on their perspective on the course. Did you enjoy it? Yes, no, what could have been better? And I can use this in support of my practice when going for these interviews. 
You always feel so much better. You feel so much better when you show up to an interview saying, hey, I've done this. I've done the work. I'm doing the work. I am confident that I know exactly what I'm doing even when there are areas for growth, but I am confident in myself and my ability to get the job done and get the job done in excellence. When you're showing up from a place of confidence, it exudes off of you. And even when there are areas for growth and even when your ratings may not be the best, they cannot help but see that, man, this is a gem right here. This person will be great for this organization if that is the school for you. So guys, that's my portfolio.